algorithm, we ask them for the item number, and then we give them the result in the chat. We don't send them to the my account page, go click on the item and click on that. Because it's just that they don't want to. And at some point, if you want to roll calls, you just need to do what the user wants. So that's uh, that's really how we can skip steps and how we can um, well make it uh, reach resolution a lot faster than just having him uh, process through the steps. Um, I said that we were making virtual agents and we didn't want to make fake humans, but it doesn't mean that we don't have a layer of, uh, let's say, social protocol, meaning that the agent, the virtual agent has a name, has a personality. And one thing that we found is that uh, the people react a lot better <coughs> the information that the agent provides is current. Instead of trying to keep the ball in the corner, like, what's the weather today? Well, I think I can see some blue sky from my, from my desk. Like, I don't want to answer. We, if we can access APIs and say, yeah, you know, today in San Francisco, <coughs> it's raining. And this is perfectly possible. We have APIs that gives us that kind of results. Then it makes for a lot of return. A human interaction that's a lot richer. And when you look at it, it's similar to what happens with the CSR. The CSR won't talk to you about its private life, but often you will talk about, you will teach up. It's like, yeah, how is it going? How is it the weather? That kind of things. Just waiting for the solution, just passing time until you get your resolution. And this is also, we have people who try to want to test the system. Oh, it's a computer system. Okay, what does it know? Because asking questions about the problems are not, it's not fun. So they would go for those things. And actually what we found out is, if you take the information that's usually contained on the Facebook page, you have you are kind of the subjects that we did talk about. So as long as you can provide basic information on those subjects, and if you can keep those, uh, those pieces of information current, like, movie did you see recently? If you can get the movie that that have uh, <coughs> coming out in the previous week, all the better. It's not mission critical, but still it makes for a far better experience. So that's that's another example. Now what happens after the dialogue? Earlier uh, during this presentation I mentioned the uh, live chat question. Meaning that when we don't know or we know we cannot handle the case because there are uh, issues that need human interaction. Then what we do is we escalate to a live chat. It could be phone, but usually companies prefer live chat. In the case of live chat, what we want to do is uh, provide the CSR with the context of what's going on. What is the user talking about? What is this problem? And if we can provide them information they would have had to ask the user beforehand. That way, we save time. And what happens is that usually when we want to do that, we first select the right live chat queue for the user. We send it to the right person. Then we check if live chat is available, because sometimes you have 20, 25 minutes wait time. <coughs> okay, you are not sending somebody that or it's it's closed. So when, when we see that, we send them to alternate ways. We don't want the user to be blocked. Really, we always want the user to reach a solution. Be it with us, by live chat, by phone, by email. We don't care as long as they get a solution, and as long as they get the optimal solution, the optimal channel for the solution, and cheap. After that, I mean, we just pass the transcript so that uh, the CSR can read what happened before and not ask questions that were already asked. It's very important. Asking the same question twice only makes for frustrated user. And in the base cases, it depends on the vendor we're working with, we can provide a seamless integration uh, between uh, or interface and the live chat. I will, uh, I will talk a little more about this in the next slide. What we've seen is uh, 15 to 16 percent reduction in the call ending time, which in the live chat center is very useful. And also, not surpri well, surprisingly or not, uh, 10 percent increase in CSAT, which is still good. Uh, 
Um, so what we do in some balance cases is what we call uh, deep integration with actual providers, meaning that on the left you see the the UI of the chat interface for the virtual agent. It's an uh, AT and T uh, consumer product. She's a nice girl. She she can help you on your wireless uh, internet or on your problems. Uh, she can make AT and T network better. So no, no need to ask her. But then sometimes we need to send that uh, to send the user to that chat system. What happens then is that instead of going through another UI, getting used to it, and so on, the user actually stays in the same UI. It's just that we morph it slightly to make sure that the user understands that it's not with the reference anymore. That's the header that changes. Um, also, the, the header in the chat box that changes. And now he's talking with the, with the CSO. So really, it's a seamless experience. You just go from one to the other without having to worry about windows opening, windows closing, all that. Just straightforward. Still after the data, um, what some of our clients, um, this is, I think it's a big trend on the market, wants to have a really complete view of all their interactions with their customers, just because they want to be able to, to understand them. And when you visit the website, this is part of interaction with, with the brand. And um, for the, the support people, they'd like to know, okay, what did it look, what did it do? Often the problem is that it's too much information and it's not structured enough. With the virtual agent, the good point is that you can create structure out of the structure of data. And that's one thing where we, at the end of data, will just create a ticket, even if we are successful. That way, any CSR can see all the interactions that happen between the virtual agent and uh, the user. And that, that way, CSR can be completely aware of what is the situation of the user with respect to the complaint. Did he try it already three times before getting an answer? In this case, we should give high priority to this case. We should make sure that it's treated well, because I mean, it's, it has taken a long time for him to get there. Or is it the first time he's talking about it? Did he already try it on the website? If he didn't try before, then you can advise him, well, I solved your problem, but let me tell you where you could find the info as well. So it's also the education process here again, but in a way that where you make sure that you're not making any missteps. Because telling somebody, well, you know, you could have gone to the website and look for the answer there. Yeah, I already did it. <laughs> Oops, my mistake. If you can be sure that you're only giving useful information and you're not making any uh, mistake, it works a lot better. Yeah. Okay. Integration with analytics. Here, the main point is actually measuring performance using the same metrics for, for clients are using to measure their their channel per, uh, performance. So what we do is instead of just looking at the data, we integrate uh, we integrate events that happen outside the data. If the user go to the contact page, if the user actually contacts support. Those are the metrics that allow us to actually figure out whether or not we were successful. And the client doesn't really care if we gave an answer. I mean, we can have a 100% success rate. We always give an answer. Always the wrong one, but who cares? So, so really the point here is, if you want to measure the performance of an object region, you cannot just look at the dialogue. You need to look outside the box. You need to look at the, the user browsing session. And that's what we do with this. Uh, some mistakes to avoid. Um, first of all, managing expectations. Integration will create expectations. So I'll give you one simple example. If you welcome somebody by his first name, then you need to deliver. Because you're implying that you know the person, but if you don't have any other information, it's useless. Don't greet the person with his first name. Don't say anything. Say hello, but no first name. Because if you say, Hello, Jeffrey. Then you're, you're telling me you know who I am. If you know who I am, you know my problem. So that's one very important thing. 
manage expectations. And that's the capitalistic complaint. Picking focus on real pain points. I mean, integration has a cost because if you involve IT, uh, it should be done only on the real pain points, not on those small issues that we need to plan for people in less than 1% of the cases. So, to conclude uh, this presentation, integration with the backend system has a lot of potential when it comes to improving the performance of the virtual agent. Customer satisfaction, and not, it's not the main role, but it also improves the entertainment factor of the virtual agent. But uh, really, what needs to happen is it needs to happen for really useful case, not for uh, it must be used wisely. If you use it for everything, you just be wasting resources and you won't get any Is there a scripting language? Um, we have a visual IDE that was scripting. I mean, you, the way you, uh, you would sequence blocks, uh, you have logic blocks that you go false, then I have a script, uh, it's a kind of script language. And also, could you tell us a little bit about your company? So, Virtuos is a French company. It was founded in uh, 2002. Uh, it took a while before it actually got its first time. Um, we got VC founding in 2008 uh, from the California uh, VCs. Uh, we then opened an office in San Francisco in uh, 2008 still. And I moved. Uh, and we have brought us on the gate in San Francisco. We have 14 main clients accounting eBay, PayPal, Second Tech, ATT, Check, for those who know it, in the US. It's a text rental company, text rental. They have they've been a huge success. It's one of the biggest success in the Valley for a while. Uh, in France, we have uh, Desapar, which is also under the Delco. Uh, we have uh, Fnac, uh, that is not real. Two million chaos, some run for Amazon, but it's smaller. Everybody's smaller than Amazon. So, who is the employees? There are 70, around 75 employees in Virtuos. Um, it's split uh, 25 in the US and 50 in Europe. The whole R&D team is in uh, Europe, um, and we are a service company, meaning that we provide uh, the configuration service to our client. So they are they are not autonomous when it comes to configure the intelligence, even though they have uh, a web suite of tools that allow them to configure the content. Uh, I would say that the, that the equivalent of the patterns layer is still too complex for them to handle. Um, the, the business logic implementation is also not uh, accessible. So do you ever do surveys of the customers who uh, who don't go to the contact page and say, did this keep you from calling? Do you actually ask so them? So usually we try to, to work with our clients to have a survey for, uh, be part of the regular client survey mm -hmm. and have a question about the different journey inside. Um, otherwise it becomes too complicated because the user don't want to Okay, thank you so much, Jeff.